In go the mushrooms. Until you heat them very slightly. Stir them in. Now we're going to put in the tomato puree. This, this sort of just, I don't know, I don't know what it does, it makes it nice. Squirt, that's probably, what's that the equivalent of? An egg cup full, something like that, maybe an egg cup full and a half. So give it a moment to warm up because that makes it more fluid. And then we can stir it in. And then we can start thinking about making our gravy style juice. This can go in the bin, obviously. It smells nice, it does smell nice. Not sophisticated, I didn't say that, just nice. Um, right, this is a bit of a cheat, here's a small joke. I want to add a little bit of rich brown gravy-like goodness to that, and I'm actually going to do it. Real cooks look away, because this is disgraceful. I know, I'm going to use a spoonful of old-fashioned gravy granules. Ah. Just a bit. Well, there's actually nothing wrong with these things. They're pretty good, I think. So again, a sort of heat, heat spoon. There's the granules. And now we'll put those away because it's shameful. Sorry about my hair, by the way. I don't know what's going on. It's because it's very hot in here. Um, so we got that in there. Add a tiny bit of pepper to that. What the hell is... How can that not be working? It is. There we go, there's a little bit of pepper in there. Um, I'm going to put a tiny, tiny amount of the Chateauneuf de Pap in. Oh, like so. And a little bit of... What the hell have I done with that? Hang on. Here we go. Someone's put it away. Uh, Liam Perrins, or you could put Worcester sauce in, or a bit of gravy brownie, anything that makes it sort of brown, really. This is brown food. Right, I'm going to add a bit of hot water to that from the potato pot in a minute when we come to do the mash. Spuds are, are yielding, but they're not entirely compliant, so I think that's about right. Good. Oven gloves, where are those? Now, what I'm going to do is just take a small amount of that potato water and pour it into my little jug with the gravy granules and stuff in. There you go. Not, not very much at all. You can't see this, and I'm, I'm bored of moving the camera around, but I'm, I'm just pouring the potatoes out into an ancient colander so that the water disappears. And now, having done that, put the spuds back into the hot pan. That will dry off any excess moisture because the pan is hot. It's got quite a nice thick bottom, this one. Put that to one side for a moment. That's looking very nice. I'm going to add to that nice mixture a bit of this cheat juice that we made with the grain granules and so on. Here we go. Let's give that a last stir. Uh, yeah, it's all mixed up very nicely. Yes. I almost made slightly too much. That really is all you need. That was the equivalent of a small teacups such as your grandmother would have had, that sort of amount, that's all. This, remember, is shepherd's pie for two slightly fat people, so it's two generous portions. Right, I'm going to show you this because I think it looks quite exciting. 
There we go, we've added tomato puree, we've added the gravy mixture I made, everything is looking lovely. There are my potatoes just drying off a bit, we're now going to make the mash.